Hey guys welcome to my channel. I hope you're well. This is a story about what if Deku had a blood cork part 6 so I hope you enjoy. The title of the fanfiction we will be listening to is Blood for the Blood God and it's by Ryujin Mao on fanfiction.net. So please go check out the fanfiction and the author in the description and support them for making this great story. But anyways let's get to the story. The slight layer of frost that covered his right side did little to deter his movements, the youngest Todoroki immediately sprinting from his position at the front of the corridor to put distance between himself and the competitors behind him. Shoto was determined to win the school festival only using his ice power, since he hated his dreaded left side. The flames were a curse and nothing else, which was why he was furious when Midoriya began spouting his spiel. The vampire knew nothing of his struggles, of the abuse his mother suffered, the pains that he went through as a kid. The vampire had no right to talk as he did, of that Shoto was sure. The dual-colored teen would be sure to win the events his way, nullifying any glory that could be associated to the use of Endeavor's odious fire. His mother's ice was enough to win this competition, considering all the time he had trained with it. He was precise with his ice, creating just enough to trap the surrounding competitors, freezing their ground and assuring himself a good head start. Or so he thought, but people from his class managed to read his move, much to his surprise. Plenty of his classmates, and many from their sister class 1B, evaded having their feet frozen, everyone using their unique ways to advance against his icy setback. The rules, rules of the event stated that direct harmful intent was prohibited, but getting in the way of the competition was fair enough, as long as nobody got seriously hurt. You couldn't hope that hero hopefuls did not get a bit physical, especially teens. Shoto, however, did not let his surprise get in his way. He continued his sprint, his physical condition among the top of his class. He did find weird that Izuku was not close by, but that only did prove his point about beating the vampire at this. A good few meters after the starting line that bottled many into a mess, Shoto found his first true obstacle. One of the teachers, present Mike, was shouting excitedly to the crowd of spectators about the might of the zero-pointers that were used in the entrance exams, only this time there were a bunch of them together instead of the one-per-zone deal. Nothing that would hinder him, after all, Shoto had a point to prove. Since the school went this far, I expected them to provide something more challenging. The teen murmured to himself, tapping into the cold power that housed in his right side. Frost and ice began to build up, a cold wind suddenly following the movement of his right hand as he lazily swiped at the 20 meter tall robots. Since my shitty old man is here, this is the least they could do. He said, uncaring eyes glancing at his work. The folk behind him began gawking at him, surprised voices and unbelieving shouts from both com competitors and spectators as they marveled at such simple action. Shoto once more resumed his sprint, going under one of the metallic menaces. He heard some students talk about following behind him, so he gave out an alert. I would not do that if I were you, since they are so tilted. True to his words, the robots half covered in ice were tilting, their inclination indicating that they could and would fall down at any moment. Like Spell, his warning was soon a reality as gravity did its work and began dropping down the behemoths of metal. He paid one last glance backwards, wondering if anyone would be crazy enough to dive under the falling metal. Todoroki's eyes widened as Izuku and Tokoyami seemed to almost spawn at the location, making their way without hindrances as they used their quirks to batter aside the falling fragments of ice and metal as if they were inconveniences. Gleaming Ruby stared back at him, Izuku's declaration annoyingly ringing at the back of Shoto's mind. Plus Ultra, am I right? Todoroki pictured the vampire's serious face in his head, the image pissing him off. Endeavor will not have his wishes granted, I won't use his fire. Izuku was aware that rushing to the front of the lines was useless, considering the narrowing corridor that the students were at, which also meant that the usual run faster than your competition tactic would render little results for this segment. That, however, did not apply to the more aerial means of locomotion, a path that few people seemed to be considering, as they were more worried about shoving each other in hopes of getting a little closer to the exit of the bottle. As present Mike shouted an overly loud go. In his microphone, the vampire grabbed his raven-headed friend's arm and made use of his, blink, upwards, effectively skipping over the majority of the competition as they were launched mid-air thanks to the vampire's powerful legs. Tokoyami was quick to follow up, calling upon, 
upon, dark shadow, and manipulating the mass of sentient darkness to assume a more aerodynamic form, the duo gliding over their competition and earning themselves many surprised yelps and one angry shot from a particular ash blonde. Todoroki had taken the lead with his flash freeze stunt, but Class 1A had not survived their encounter against villains merely by luck. One quick peek backwards and Izuku caught several of his classmates advancing the obstacle the, half-cold, half-hot, user had left behind, that was without mentioning the many students from other courses, including the neighbor Class 1B. Izuku had a grin painted in his lips as he held Fumikage's arm, the duo finally descending from their improvised flight and meeting solid ground, immediately beginning their sprint to continue advancing. And we already have a pecking order being established this soon into the race, as Todoroki Shoto literally freezes his opponents in place. Yet, my dear listeners, the surprises are only beginning. As Midoriya Izuku and Tokoyami Fumikage take to the skies to avoid getting cold feet, the rest of Class 1A is quick to display their skill, watch out folks, these kids are not playing about. One could not hear their own thoughts under the blasting voice of the hero, but the added voices of the excited spectators managed to convey their current feelings about the first moves of the race. There was a bit of a spotlight being cast over the heroics course students, but considering the still recent villain attack and subsequent repelling by the kids, it was only expected. Izuku and his friend advanced a bit more before they having their way blocked by the behemoth's zero-pointers, their increased number, number proving to Izuku that the hero school had too much money and mechanical engineers in hand. The vampire sent a questioning glance to Tokoyami, the raven-headed teen returning the look as he wondered their next plan of action. Luckily, it seemed that Todoroki was willing to fill in that part for them, making extensive use of his power to create another frozen scape, this time the surprise factor hitting that much harder as he froze the seven zero-pointers with one wave of his hand. The sheer power of the act had Izuku taken back for a few moments, enough time for the faster competitors to reach them, only to stop and marvel too at the frozen titans. You fucks better get the fuck out of my way. Blasting sounds revealed a very angry Bakugu approaching at high speed, only for him to change directions and begin going upwards, using the same strategy Izuku had done earlier, and fuck you he had not copied that from the fucking bloodsucker. The vampire glanced back at his friend, already grabbing at his arm. Ready for another jump? Izuku asked Tokoyami, wondering if the Ravenhead's stomach could handle another burst of high speed. Blink was not even close to be compared to its power of origin, but small victories stacked. The bloodsucker also covered his hands in a thin layer of blood, only enough to make a glove. He couldn't just jump to using blood gauntlets, as they would eat away too quickly at his reserves, but this was currently enough to reinforce his fingers and claws, enough to shear metal if need be. Fumikage nodded to Azuku, taking a deep breath before they appeared to teleport from their current position to just under a zero point zero pointer, ice chunks falling off the machine as they began falling off due to their tilted position. Releasing the arm of his avian-headed friend, Izuku clawed at an ice chunk, Tokoyami commanding his quirk to do the same, even as his complexion looked a bit strained. Izuku counted himself lucky to not be affected by the high speeds he could reach, his friend not having the same lucky draw. The vampire continued running, batting aside the odd chunk of ice that got in his way. He could see Todoroki a few meters ahead, running with a determined expression and never looking back to his competition. The bloodsucker wondered why the other teen seemed so hell-bent on winning the events without fully using his quirk, but Izuku opted to leave those thoughts aside. Distractions were not what he was looking for at the moment. The following meters had the vampire stay a few meters behind Todoroki, saving energy for what would probably come. Soon, another obstacle presented itself to the teens, an enormous pitfall that was dotted with some platforms connected by ropes. Izuku did not stop his feet, rushing at full speed ahead almost as if he was willing to drop down the chasm. A few shouts were sent his way by the spectators, the people wondering what he was doing. And then, the vampire used, Blink, appearing at another platform, still a few meters behind Shoto, who was simply running over the ropes by freezing them solid, giving himself a stable foothold to cross the pitfall, but that would crumble just as he cleared the run. It impressed the vampire, that kind of control and focus was something praiseworthy, besides, Izuku didn't see any way for the young Todoroki to use the other half of his quirk. The vampire glanced backwards as he appeared on one of the last platforms, seeing Fumikage doing a great job at using his quirk to haul himself over the chasm, the living darkness grabbing the ropes with ease. Ease. 
Tokoyami saw that Izuku was looking at him and gave the pale teen thumbs up. That the vampire had helped him clear the first and considerably most bothersome obstacle was enough help for the raven-headed teen. Izuku nodded as thanks to his friend, returning his focus ahead of him just in time for his hunter instincts to blare a warning. Incoming from above. Not that Izuku would have missed the periodic explosions or the continuous growling, but Kugo blasting at the position Izuku was previously at. You fuck, don't dodge. The Ash Blonde shouted, stabilizing himself midair before running ahead of the vampire. Izuku felt his fangs itch as he looked at Bakuba's back, the wish to drink blood from the aggressive teen quelled by force as the vampire took a deep breath and, blink, ed the last platform, keeping the same running speed from before. Knowing Katsuki, he is probably going to be butting heads with Todoroki, who won't back down from the challenge. They will probably keep at it until either one pulls ahead or someone passes them. Let them tire each other out. Present Mike hyped the crowd as the development occurred, the vampire happy with his current position. As he accurately predicted, as soon as the ash blonde reached the young Todoroki, he dropped from his impromptu flight and began a battle of attrition with the other teen, each trying to get in the way of the other. The vampire slowed a bit his pace, letting the duo rush ahead and give him a better idea of what the next obstacle of the race would be, soon enough being rewarded as the duo and immediately slowed down their rushed steps, yet still continued their harassment of each other. Some of the faster competitors managed to catch up to Azuku, those that did wondering if the vampire had run out of steam as he seemed to slow down. Which could not be farther from the truth, as things stood, Izuku had barely warmed up or used his abilities. The Himamancer wondered if the people passing him by had any notion of this. Not that he would lose on purpose, but until he could properly plan for what lay ahead it would be foolish to exhaust himself or show his aces. His patience paid off, a boosted Ida rushing ahead like a maniac, only for the team to be literally blown off back to the start of the line by the force of a landmine, a remaining pink cloud putting apprehension on the hearts of the competitors. Izuku almost grinned like a maniac at the sight. He did not have anything against Ida, if he was completely honest he could thank the taller teen for his splendid sacrifice of stamina and health so unveil the hidden obstacle. Finally, someone triggered them. Watch out participants, our last obstacle has been revealed. A minefield that will make you crap your pants. However, worry not, as the mines aren't lethal. They still will kill your dignity if you crap your pants, though. Forever the hype beast, present mixed voice echoed all over the stadium, informing all the spectators of the final obstacle. A few more minds were triggered, those responsible for their activation being knocked all over the place as more pink mushroom-like clouds emerged on the field. As the dust began to settle down and more students began reaching the minefield, Izuku began working on a plan. His eyes scanned the minefield ahead, mind hard at work in hopes of memorizing the placement of the mines. Such endeavor proved to be a waste of time, as the mines had no discernible placement pattern, seemingly randomly placed wherever they could, with the space between them just enough for the participants to place their feet without triggering them. As he had paused at the beginning of the minefield, a few of his classmates passed by, wondering if Izuku had given up on the event. The Himamancer, however, changed gears. If I can't traverse the normal way, why not make my own way? Izuku thought as he crouched down, mist beginning to exit his pores once more as he eyed the field ahead, many participants dotting the grounds in various parts of the obstacle. Since you all are providing such stable platforms, please let me thank you in advance for being such selfless people. The vampire joked in his head. He was aiming for first place. Izuku wasn't the most competitive person out there, and most of the time he preferred to remain away from any sort of spotlight, but he was a red-blooded male. Such a challenge directed at his person would not be ignored or left without an answer. Tokoyami, Bakugu and many others in his class were trying their absolute best out here, and while Izuku did not like some, he could respect both their will and drive for self-improvement. Thus, Izuku, blink, ed. Right atop the shoulders of a beast-like teen, whose face was colored in surprise to find the sudden extra weight of his unexpected passenger. Muttering sorry for the inconvenience, Izuku used the teen as a springboard, eyes rapidly scanning the field for another able-bodied student to aid his movement. This time the vampire found Shoji, the mask-wearing teen fully focused on the ground, thus unaware of the high-speed vampiric projectile that flung itself at him. 
Skipping the apology, Izuku used his classmates back to advance further over the field, completely ignoring the yelps and exasperated voices of the competition as he effectively jumped from student to student. A few almost fell down due either to the bleeding momentum or the sudden weight, releasing undignified complaints to the vampire. What is that? Using the competition like stepping, stepping stones, the overlord of the night of 1A, Midoriya Izuku skips ahead of the competition like a ravenous beast eager for the victory. Who could predict this sort of outcome? Izuku released an annoyed grunt at his teacher, focusing on the path ahead. He executed another jump, finding himself much closer to the leaders of the race, Bakugu and Todoroki glancing backwards, only to find Izuku just a few meters shy from them, high in the air. The vampire smiled at his opponents, his hands being covered in crimson fluid as his blood seeped from the inside of his skin, becoming tendrils. Such tendrils lashed out to grab the duo of teens, immediately pulling Izuku towards them. Bakugu managed to blast the blood tentacle clinging to his right arm, scorching his shirt in the process. Todoroki froze the crimson tendril before it could slow him down, but they had already provided Izuku with the necessary boost. The vampire flew above them, somersaulting as they tried to reach and stop the vampire. Frost and sparking hands were a few centimeters short of reaching the Himamancer, and thus, Izuku took the lead while in the air, the remaining blood that was around his hands spiking and ejecting like the burst of a shotgun shell. The needle-like fragments of hardened blood did not reach the teens, and instead was aimed at the ground beneath them. Exactly where a couple of mines laid at. Bakuku's eyes widened as he tried to take flight and avoid the impact of the mines. Fucking bloodsucker. Time seemed to slow down for the ravenous ash blonde, the mini explosions sparking in his hands not enough for Bakugu to rise up in time. He was engulfed in a pink cloud, Izuku having cleared the minefield without having to set a single foot on the ground. Fucking blood sue. The explosion of the mine cut short whatever curse the bomber tried to shout out. Izuku barely touched the ground after his last move before he used, blink, once more, immediately gaining a lead over his adversaries, who did not seem to be bothered much by the explosions that he set upon them. Bakugu emerged from the pink cloud with a furious expression, his arms behind him as explosions began propelling him ahead. Shoto, on the other hand, barely seemed phased, parting the cloud and continuing his run. Only this time, the Todoroki was clearly frustrated, his expression becoming fierce as he pushed himself forward. Their efforts were clear for all the spectators to see. However, in front of Izuku, who seemed to be extremely fond of this sudden ability to rush ahead, they couldn't help but come short. The cheering inside the stadium reached a peak climax as the noise of the rushing steps, or in Katsuki's case, propelling explosions, became louder and louder, people sitting at the very edge of their seats so as to witness who would cross the finish line first. Dear listeners, pay attention. The competition that seemed so certain at the beginning has now shifted to a free-for-all as surprises began pilling up. The favorites of our race are now scrambling to reach the sudden first place. Who could predict this outcome? Now, let's see. The man who first exits the tunnel and snags first place is. The announcement had brought about the loudest screams of the day so far as civilians, heroes, and VIPs had their eyes glued to sear in their brain who would be the winner of this race. The tunnel echoed the noises of the three lead students, students, when the concrete was suddenly grabbed by a multitude of crimson red tendrils, a smoke-like mist leaving a trail behind as a body rocketed away from the tunnel and passed the finish line with blurring speed. The large screens around the stadium displayed the captured video evidence, slowing the video so as to allow the spectators to comprehend what happened. The video slowed down and replayed, displaying a green mop of hair with red gleaming eyes crossing the finish line. Our resident vampire crosses the finishing line before his competition, blowing his opponents out of the water. Is he a tentacle monster or what? Running and jumping over his problems like a true creature of the night, 1AS Midoriya Izuku was the winner. The noise of the stadium was nothing short of deafening, their raw emotion pressing down like a physical force over the vampire, his classmates passing the finishing line as he took in the sight of all the people that had come over to the school to watch their performance. He heard the growling of the ash blonde behind him, as well as the short pants that the dual-color-haired teen released before he got his breathing under control. Izuku knew it was poor sportsmanship. He knew he should not be doing such childish provocations, they were not of his nature. Yet, 
He could not stop the smirk that painted his face as he turned around to face his rivals. Bakuba's red eyes and Todoroki's dichromatic ones settled over the dull emeralds that glinted with red, eldritch power. As the three males sized each other, the vampire could not resist the words that left his mouth. They barely made noise and one could argue that Izuku had mouthed them more than maid said them, but the two other teens had heard them loud and clear, almost as if the vampire had shouted them close to their ears. The second placer, Todoroki Shoto, had such serious eyes that it was a wonder he had not frozen everything in his field of vision. Bakugu began grinding his teeth so hard, one could wonder if he was about to break them. His hands began smoking profusely, the sharp and sweet smell of the nitroglycerin increasing twofold as the ash blonde stared at both Azuku and Todoroki. Plus Ultra, eh? After all the fanfare that proceed after his victory, Izuka found himself a shaded spot to rest for a while, waiting the remaining participants to finish crossing the line. He remembered Midnight mentioning that only 42 students would be allowed to continue, the vampire wondering what sort of events the school had prepared for them. Present Mike was still doing his hype man job, but Izuku was tuning out the passionate speech that he spoke, focusing on more important matters. Those matters were reconnaissance and information gathering. The vampire began observing the students that crossed the finishing line, eyes capturing every detail, appearance, current breathing rate, heartbeat rate, and apparent quirk use. Such information was crucial for the Hemomancer, as he began the methodical process of dissecting the classified students for intel. It also gave him some time to calm down, the testosterone flowing in his veins enticing, hunter instincts, to whisper its call in his mind. The inner beast was silent for now, content with merely lying inside its cage. Reigning in his more wild side, the vampire kept at his task until the last student passed the finishing line, the vampire raising one brow in surprise as he found the diminutive shape of Mineta Minoru tiredly finishing his run and throwing himself on the grass of the stadium. Izuku was having a hard time believing that the purple-headed teen was still enrolled in UA, but he let the fleeting curiosity die down as he found May among the people that passed the first event. A smile, many around him confusing it with a smirk due to how evil it looked painted across the the vampire's lips, ghosted his lips, the vampire standing up from his spot close to the walls to approach the mechanic girl, her usual scent mixed in with a salty aftertaste of sweat serving as a trail that Izuku followed like a dog. He got close to here, but before the vampire could call her out, Midnight began explanations about the following event. Izuku grumbled a bit to himself, but paid attention to the explanations of the heroine, already switching gears. The cavalry match was quite simple, something along the lines of a protect the VIP slash capture the hostage scenario, except they would be more mobile and there would be plenty of VIPs, as they had to snatch the headbands and score high. Their time limit being 15 minutes, it was plenty to display their skills with coordination and improvisation among the participants. The R-rated heroine kept explaining the point system they would be working with, the details of it registering at the back of the vampire's mind as he ran through optimal candidates for his team. May was an absolute given, not due to their intimate relationship, but taking in consideration her skills and current equipment, May was a walking storehouse of support items. How did she manage to convince the school board to allow her to carry all of her current gadgets was beyond him. The important part was that she was essentially the perfect spotter slash support role. And then, the entireties of his plans were put to a screeching halt as he heard midnight. The exception will be the first placer, who shall be awarded with 1 billion points. Oh? What a predicament we find ourselves at, right? The inner beast joked in his head. The vampire, however, found the situation lacking any type of humor. He could not help the cold sweat that ran down his spine when faced with the multitude of hungering eyes that settled upon his frame, gazing at him as if finding a tasty meal. Amused laughter ran in his head, the teen barely man managing to suppress a snarling groan from leaving his throat. What a time for his quirk to begin growing its sentience. Does banter not uplift the spirits of the weary ones, master? How about you help me work out a plan? That would be much more appreciated now than poor commentary. Izuku answered back, wondering if he was growing crazy to be talking back to his own mind. Or a part of it, it was difficult to pin down what exactly, true ancestor, was or could be. Dully noted, Master. However, your original plan is enough to deal with them, is it not? Who knows? Izuku shot back. 
At this point, the target has been painted on my back, covered in neon lighting and fixed with a blaring air horn. The vampire sighed a bit, eyes beginning to return the stairs back. The teens surrounding him backed off, especially when his eyes gained their infamous red gleam. Now, gather your teams, my cute kittens. You have 10 minutes to choose, please, don't disappoint me now, dears. The R-rated heroine did her spiel, allowing the participants to begin discussing their plans and teams. As that happened, Izuku turned his head back to the direction of the scent he was tracking. Only to the person to jump on him, making the vampire brace to grab her body, the added weight of her equipment not bothering the hemomancer. Zuku! I finally found you! Since you shot ahead at the beginning I didn't manage to catch up and was worried, but then I thought it would be better this way since I could display my babies in their full glory. This competition will be in our hands right away, I've brought everything that could possibly be of use, and anything else is just a few screws away from that. Being her usual chatterbox self, May began barraging Izuku with words, frantically presenting, presenting support items and the like to the vampire, almost as if she was hosting a commercial. Izuku smiled at the display, patting her head in hope that the action would calm the energetic girl. It managed to do so, earning him the mechanic's full attention. Yeah, there was no way I would put up a team and not include you. Don't worry about it. He spoke in a quiet tone, hands still running over the top of her head as he continued to head pat her. Hatsum had a dusting blush over her face for a few moments, before she frantically nodded in affirmation. I just need to gather the rest of our team. May's crosshair pupils focused on him, wondering if they even needed a team to beat the rest of the competition. It wasn't May being arrogant, she was merely acknowledging the facts. Using her support equipment, added upon the versatility of Azuka's quirk, May had guaranteed that they could face down almost anything. In the end, she opted to trust the vampire, as his choices had yet to fail her. The vampire was quick to approach his target, the lone raven-headed teen that seemed busy being by himself. The teen sensed the approach of the vampire and raised his head to meet the gaze of his fellow abyss walker, a knowing look settled upon his face. Has the time come already for the darkness to encompass the skies and display its might to the fools of the light world? Even the dramatic speaker, Tokoyami closed his eyes as he nodded his head to Izuku in a knowing manner. The vampire scoffed with mirth in his tone, closing one eye to glance at his edgy friend with an eye smile. Would you have it any other way? Izuku answered, expending one hand already wrapped up in shadowy matter for a handshake. Kumikage responded in kind, his quirk popping out giving, giving a friendly greeting to the hemomancer before it settled one of its paws over its host's hand, imitating the manner which Izuku could wrap his limb in darkness. You know me well, Midoriya. Hey, Shadow Dweller. Hello there. Izuku kindly greeted the quirk, eyes already searching for the fourth member of his team. He also gave the quirk a few head pats, seeing the materialized shadow being ruffle its feathers. Have either of you seen Kyukasan or Yayarozu-san? They would be essential to the formation I have in mind. The raven-headed teen shook his head, pointing in a general direction. As the vampire followed the finger, he found that both girls already had teams. Much to his disappointment, Kyuka was in together in a team, the same could be said for Yayarozu. He'd hoped that his vice president wanted to partner up, so it stung Izuku a bit that the sheer versatility factor that Momo brought had been taken by Todoroki, who seemed to have chosen a team specifically made to counter Izuku in mind. The vampire analyzed his adversaries, Ida being the super mobile factor to counter Izuku's speed and, Blink, Kaminari to counter any attempts at getting closer, Yayarozu for the before-mentioned versatility factor where she could make anything, and the leader himself with overwhelming power to counter any ranged attacks, while dishing out his own. That was without mentioning Bakugu and his aerial maneuverability. Izuku could already see the bomber exploiting the hell out of the rule that so long as the rider did not touch the ground, they were good to go. That was all troublesome enough, but the vampire wished to have four members in his team, else his firepower would fall and his strategy strategies would shorten dramatically. Then, Izuku spotted the desperate short teen with purple balls for hair. It mattered not for the vampire why or how he still was here, so long as he could properly be a team player, Izuku would have him. Mobility was good and all, but trapping was much more the vampire's alley. 
escaping would only work so much, while a properly laid trap would spell doom for whoever got caught in it, meaning that Izuku had some working counters for the heavy powers of Team Todoroki. His strategy worked out, Izuku approached the diminutive team, who was frantic and desperate, as few to none seemed to be willing to give him a chance. Just when Mineta felt like giving up, a shadow appeared behind him. Slowly turning around, the short teen found himself staring at dull emeralds, the resident vampire of 1A had come to his aid, yet Mineta felt intimidated, like he was staring at a predator ready to end his life. Hello there, it seems that you find yourself without a proper team. Lackadaisical and soft-spoken, it seemed almost as if Azuku become a shady businessman offering him a shady deal. Mineta gulped hard the sudden lump that was in his throat. His salvation seemed to be coming in the form of a deal with the devil. Yet, Mineta did not seem to mind. He was intimidated and worried, yes, the proposition of the principal Nizu adding much to his predicament, but much more so, this was a chance for him to prove himself much more than a fool that had gotten lucky when he landed in 1A at the first day. He had passed the combat entrance exam and his grades were good, damn it. Sure, he knew he had to work on his attitude, but what was wrong with being true to his wishes? He'd partner up with this vampire and win his place back in 1A. He knew he could do this. Mineta-san, would you wish to be a part of my team? There it was again, the almost devilish way that Izuku could speak that seemed to strike both fear and respect in Mineta's heart. Why yes, I want. Mineta wanted to curse himself for flinching, but he kept that to himself as he followed the vampire back to where his team waited for them. He expected a few side glances, considering he had a bit of a reputation in the general studies, but the team of the vampire did not push him about or was mean to him. In fact, the short team found himself a bit flattered when Izuku mentioned that the cornerstone of their plan depended on Mineta and his quirk. Damn, this Midoriya guy was quickly climbing the ladder of respect in Mineta's mind. That the chick in his team was quite busty too uplifted his mood, but to first try his luck with the ladies, Minoru first had to climb back to his glory. Time has passed, adorable kittens. I hope you won't disappoint me. Put up a beautiful show, alright? Midnight announced with a crack of her whip, eyes glancing at all the teams ready to fight. She wasted no time giving them green lights with another air-splitting sound. Go! The very second the signal was given, many teams rushed to meet the supposed team Midoriya, except he was not the writer of his team. That was the very short Mineta Minoru, taking many of 1A by surprise, as they were sure that the team had been expelled. Izuku's fangs itched as he saw his classmates in awe, licking his sharp canines to try and dispel some of the excitement that began building up. He was the base of the horse, with Tokoyami and May being the rear and Mineta the rider, the setup giving Izuku many advantages to work. Set advantages which he was immediately exploiting, as some teams were confused as to why the vampire was not at the lead, Izuku brought his team to rush at the nearest at attacker, a group of students from Class 1B. Blood began seeping from Izuka's neck and back, turning into a multitude of tentacles which shot at the headband of the enemy rider, relieving them of their points and startling the team. Izuka's plan of attack made use of a few lop holes in the rules. It was never stated by midnight that the horses couldn't attack or aid the attacker, as well as it also was never stated that the rider had to attack. As such, Mineta made for the perfect rider as his short status meant that to attack him, people would need to get much closer to him, opening their guards for an attack. The vampire could attack as a mixed attacker slash defender, with the support from Tokoyami and Dark Shadow, to cover any spots the vampire missed. Hatsum aided them with her equipment, providing boots that could boost them away in a rush and a few other gadgets that the vampire opted to hold back for now, that was without mentioning her eyes, as she could spot the machinations of any team before they could reach close to perform it. Finally, Mineta could also aid them with the use of his quirk. His did pop off, balls were the perfect trap, considering that even if people dodged them, they would still remain effective on the field, denying roaming area to other teams and allowing Team Midoriya slash Mineta to deal with enemies at their very leisure. Izuku passed the headband to the rider, craning his neck to the side to pop the bone with a satisfying noise. As he did this, the crimson tentacles around his neck area wiggled and moved like snakes, ready to strike at whoever was willing to get too close. The addition of, Dark Shadow, covering the rear made the prospect of attacking the billion-point team lose much of its charm. Charm. 
The only team to be actively looking for a fight against the vampire was Team Todoroki, the cold and calculative eyes of Shoto told of a clear message. I'll beat you. Izuku glanced back at the dichromatic team, staring deep into his eyes. Good luck with that, I'd like to see you try. Then, Todoroki's mind was assaulted by crimson light, almost as if something was trying to forcefully open his mind and lay it bare. Shoto almost ripped his headband off, were it not for the sudden jolt he received from the staff that smacked against his face, courtesy of Yayarozu and her creation, Quirk. What the hell was that, Todoroki-san? The girl asked, clearly worried about her classmate almost throwing the game for them. Shoto warned his team before he created ice all around them, pushing back those that tried to take advantage of his momentary lapse. I don't know. It just, Midoriya. He must have some trick that works with eyesight. As soon as I looked into his eyes, it felt weird. Then, we must avoid him for now. The girl suggested, glancing to Ida in a questioning manner. You speak with him on a regular basis, has he ever mentioned something like this? Midoriya-san doesn't talk much about his quirk, so I'm sorry to inform I lack the information you seek. Ida answered, pushing his team away from the attackers nearby, dodging a shot of glue in the circle of ice that suddenly began to soften under them. While Team Todoroki dealt with that, Izuku and his group were busy with dodging the other team. Since they had the grand prize with them, various attacks also rained down over as the group did its best to either dodge or block the incoming attacks. Izuku was the first to hear the sound of crackling explosions coming their way, thus he immediately acted. Expertly weaving his blood tendrils into a dome, Izuku har hardened the shape solid enough for it to resemble an iron shield, the barrier protecting his diminutive rider from being blasted or having the prized headband taken away, but Kogu not being a happy boy for having his attack defended. Fuck you, you Dracula-looking ass bitch. Don't block my attacks. His shouting pissed the vampire off, his shield construct wavering until it became fluid again. But Kogo tried for another attack, but had to stop at the last second to dodge something that came from underneath him. As the Ash Blonde used his explosions to retreat, he saw a dark spike emerge from Azuku's shadow, the dark matter quickly retreating back to its master's shadow, which confused and stunned the bomber. Since when could Izuku control his shadow like that? The only one that had such power was Birdhead, but he was busy, so how? The answer came as Bakugu saw the white gleam of the fangs inside Izuku's mouth. Shitty vampire can gain other quirks from the people he drinks blood? Ha, huh, what a fucking joke. A shitty power to compliment a shitty monster. The Hemomancer saw his childhood bully back off to attack other target, surely planning to come back once he got a better idea of what Izuku could do. The vampire made his blood return to the many tendrils from before, one touching Mineta to call the attention of the writer. Ready to be the spotlight of the battle? The question was answered enthusiastically by Mineta, who had been mostly defensive for the last eight minutes that group had been going around, only chucking a few of his hairballs at those that tried to get too close. Most of the time, people were impeded by fumicage and his quirk, so he had been only holding on to their headbands and a few extras that Izuku had snatched up. I have been training this move since I got kicked out of heroics, damn it. Let's go, Midoriya. Prompted by the vampire, the group moved to allow Mineta to get the most out of, out of his technique. That meant that the group moved right to the middle of the arena, surrounded by all the other teams. With about five minutes remaining for the cavalry battle, Mineta was allowed to use the move that threw everything into chaos. Take this. Aura, Grape Rush. Furiously taking off the hair balls off his head and chucking them in random directions, Mineta began limiting the space that the other teams had, making many bump into each other as they desperately began to avoiding the sticky balls. The attack only stopped 25 seconds later, when Mineta's skull began bleeding off. Even when hurt, the diminutive teen would still have continued to attack, were it not for Izuku's call out. May, kick the air boots into maximum power. Tokoyami, have, Dark Shadow, be our platform. Mineta, get ready. We are taking flight. The orders were called, surprising everyone with how loud Izuku had shouted it. Why was he simply giving away his strategy? The answer couldn't be simpler. It mattered not if they knew, they would be powerless to stop it. 
Izuko smirked, his fangs into full display as he felt, Dark Shadow, extend and become the foothold of the team. As Mei's gear began to furiously work, giving them a decent trust, Izuku used his tendrils to firmly hold his team, the tentacles wrapping around the teens akin to living ropes. Mineta made some commentary that Izuku decided to ignore, as he focused. And then, he, Blink, Ed, right atop Team Todoroki. Hello there! The moment Izuku and his team appeared right in front of him, Todoroki knew he was extremely short of reliable options to deter the vampire. Blasting ice at the airborne team would get his own team caught in the crossfire, possibly disqualifying them from the competition. Right now, Shoto was seeing the world slow to a crawl as Izuku's clawed hand approached him, the aim could not be more obvious. It was exactly as the vampire had said before. He didn't need to hide his intent or try any fancy trick, nobody would be able to stop the green-haired vampire from achieving his wish for victory. It was at this point that Shoto felt something inside him shift. It was instinctual, an act of desperation born out of his desire to not be prey to this predator, it could be called, survival instinct, as nothing else would fit the description better. As the sharp claws got closer to his forehead, Shoto unconsciously called upon the other side of his quirk. Fire burst from his left side, the crescendo of fiery flames spreading almost like a living being, dedicated to the sole goal of protecting Todoroki. The flames licked the hand of the attacker, making the vampire recoil his limb in sudden pain, the precious seconds giving Todoroki and his team enough time to skid to the side and barely dodge the train that was Team Mineta, Midoriya, said group almost falling to the ground as their shadowy platform was suddenly diminished. Izuku hissed in pain, yet still managed to hold his team together with his blood tendrils, managing to save them from losing the competition. As they stumbled to try and get their bearing, the vampire did his best to expand his shadow and summon many shadow spikes to dissuade the advance of the other teams that tried to use the moment and capitalize on it. It had the intended effect, the various groups suddenly having to swerve and dodge out of the way of the dark matter weaponry. Damn it, I wasn't expecting him to really use it. Izuku complained to himself, the skin of his arm presenting many first-degree burn bubbles. Nothing too troublesome, since it only affected him. It wasn't even bothering him anymore, as the burns healed quickly enough for it to look like he was merely licked by the flames instead of burnt. That, however, did not stop the vampire from openly frowning at Todoroki and his team. Not going to use your left side, Todoroki? I hate to break bad news to you, but you suck at promises. Izuku prickled the barb at the other team. He wanted to provoke Todoroki, he was just surprised that it took only this much for the team to break. Here comes the fire. Team Mineta was at a full-out attack, but Team Todoroki is bringing out the big guns. The tactic from the vampire falls in front of the flames of Todoroki. How impressive, the efforts of our two teams. Present Mike hiked the crowd, many spectators shouting at the sudden flames that emerged from the Ugest Todoroki. It must have been a great surprise for the crowd, seeing Shoto being capable of using two powers. Shoto was already aware of the fact that his fire had saved him. The fact brought about a multitude of unpleasant feelings, considering that the odious flames that belonged to his father had, ironically, saved Shoto from one of the most challenging opponents in his class. A pit formed at the bottom of his stomach, the heavy sensation something that he was not used to. He glanced at Midoriya, fully aware that the the vampire had just mocked him for his lack of commitment to his promise of never using his left side in battle. That stung just as equal as the fact that he was relieved that Midoriya had not managed to steal his headbands. Izuku. Are you alright? Mei's worried shout echoed, making the vampire wave his hand at his team, the blood tendrils shifting so as to not hold to one place for too long and cut the circulation of his friends. The girl would be the one to see that he had been hurt by the burst of flames, nothing truly being able to escape her eyesight. Just a light burn, it's already gone. He replied, recalling his shadows and focusing in his own blood. As the dark spikes retreated and merged back to his own shadows, Izuka tried to cover his hands with his blood gauntlets, but he only managed to cover them with a thin layer instead of the usually bulky armor pieces. I have too much blood out of my body right now, I'm feeling a bit hungry. 
Using so many of his abilities in succession like this was a new experience for the vampire, so his tuned, advanced hemomancy, was working in overdrive to both support the use of his life liquid as well as work on the other quirk factors currently locked. He had to choose between bulking his personal defenses or the safety of his team. The crimson glow of his pupils became akin to those of floodlights as he gave up on equipping the bloody armor pieces and focused on holding his team in place. The light emanating from his eyes made Todoroki and his team very apprehensive to be facing the vampire right now. Todoroki-san, we need to act now. Since you decided to use your fire, please lay suppressive support while we rush Midoriya-san. He doesn't have many ranged options to counter it, I noticed that he has strengthened his hold over his team members, so we might even be able to defeat him completely. Yayorozu seemed rather rather overly willing to exploit the momentary weakness of Azuku, going so far as to suggest they break the vampire's team formation and disqualify him from the competition. It seemed that vampire had done something to offend the girl. However, Todoroki seemed out of his game. He stared at his own hand for a few moments, still unbelieving that Midoriya had drawn fire out him. It took another joust from Yayorozu for him to snap back to reality, eyes hardening with cold determination. Ida. You were telling us about a special move? They seem to be getting ready for something. Damn it, I should have managed my blood use better. The vampire complained to himself, his focus split between having to hold his blood tendrils around his team and using his shadow powers to defend against the sudden influx of attacks that were being flung at them. Considering the final minutes were ticking down, it made sense for the remaining teams that didn't have enough points to try their last chance at the high-value target that was around Mineta's forehead. That meant a lot of dodging and running away from the other teams and being pressured by the persistence of Team Todoroki. It was good that Izuku had a snippet of information, thankfully due to his enhanced hearing, that being that they had one last technique they were willing to try against him, which relied heavily upon Ida's quirk. Having already developed a few ultimate moves of his own, Izuku was constantly in the lookout for any suspicious act that the Tenya youngest might try. His diligence in watching the stiff team paid off, he noticed that the team stopped their relentless pursuit for a few moments, the time being of extreme essence in these last moment, moments. That sudden stop though allowed Ida to rev up his engine, quirk, the exploding noises that roared in the team's legs made Izuku's hair stand up, his crimson eyes widening as Team Todoroki shoot at them with absurd speed. If Azuku wasn't so busy with that, he might have noticed the vicious glint in Yayorozu's eyes, or the sheer intensity in Todoroki's stone-like eyes. The rich girl shone in light, a by-effect of her, creation, quirk as it worked to produce a thick blanket that Todoroki pulled over himself and covered his team however he could. The only exception to that was Kaminari, the dumb grin over his lips made Izuku curse out loud. The vampire began recalling his blood with all his focus, leaving the control over his shadow powers mostly to instinct. The inner beast growled in pleasure as Izuku's grasp over the iron cage and his mind slipped up, one of the bars snapping and allowing hunter instincts to snatch control of his shadows. The roar in his head could only be heard as one thing. Blood. 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 Blood for US. Let US feed. The vampire could not be bothered to rein in his instincts when he was dealing with bigger issues at the moment, thus he allowed the inner beast, the momentary full control over his shadows. What followed could be described as the creation of another ultimate move for Izuku. Kaminari unleashed his quirk at full power, the immediate area becoming comparable to a light show as electricity sparked and shocked just about everyone outside of Team Todoroki. Izuku and his team took the brunt of the attack as they were the closest, but they had some relief in the form of dark, shadow matter. Before, the shadows had acted as tendrils and spikes, their effect to put some distance between Izuku and his competitors. Now, the shadows twisted and knit themselves into a faux shape, neither man nor beast. Imperfect imitations of his shape, the shadows acted as a barrier, barrier that helped dampen the lighting attack. The scene would not look out of place in some sort of macabre horror movie, the black shapes being destroyed by the lightning evoking anger in the vampire's mind. Izuku then roared, ready to take on the challenge that was rushing him. Eyes being forced to their limit in concentration, the vampire made use of the blood that he had recalled before to sprout from his arms like many crimson snakes were bursting from his skin. 
the tendrils shot forward in an effort to stop the rushing team, meeting them as they came for the prize. The two teams almost crashed into each other, Izuku wrangling his hands to hold Todoroki's ones as he tried to take the headband. The vampire had much more grip strength than Shoto, and his claws dug into the back of Todoroki's hand aided in distracting the teen. Izuku tanked a blow to his midsection, a staff emerging from Yayarozu to try and pry the vampire away from the dual-haired teen. The interference was barely registered by the vampire, the teen splitting his focus between holding Todoroki and managing his bloody tendrils which were wrapping around the opposing team. The various tendrils lashed wherever they could on the other teens, the tips hardening so as to pierce skin and draw in some sustenance. The effects were almost immediate as Team Todoroki immediately tried to disengage from Izuku, the vampire resembling an eldritch abomination with the many blood tentacles around them. Yayarozu screamed, a few of his tendrils latched around her arms and shoulders taking some of her blood and feeding it to Izuku. A similar thing happened throughout the entire team, with Ida furrowing his brows at the prickling sensation, Kaminari not expressing much due to quirk overuse, and Shoto using ice to try and weight the vampire down, trying his best to give, give his team some breathing ground. The action helped, seeing as Izuku didn't want to end up frozen solid, the team released his hold over Todoroki. All taught, it was never Izuku that Shoto should have been aiming for. The youngest Todoroki might have forgotten about it, as did much of the spectators watching the match, but Izuku's team writer wasn't the vampire, but the diminutive team that had been demoted general studies. Mineta Minoru, however, wasn't about to let himself being forgotten just because he wasn't flashy or a powerhouse like those two. He would leave his mark on the competition with just as fierce determination as the vampire and the dual court Todoroki. Todoroki, you damn pretty boy. I hope you enjoy being out of the competition. Mineta shouted, his hands grasping two of his hairballs as he dove for an attack at the headbands. His inner pervert called much attention to Yayarozu and her exposed cleavage, but right now his mind was focused on dealing with the pretty boy. He would win, and then he would have a thousand girls hoping to be his grill friend. Sure dash. Shoto swiped his right hand to block the sticky traps, but he found his limb being stopped by a crimson tentacle holding him back. Once more, it seemed as if the world began crawling as one of the purple balls stuck to one of his headbands, ripping the clothing away from him. It felt like he was hit with a sledgehammer, as he'd let himself down with his tunnel vision and failed to notice. Then, it seemed as if everything became clear to Shoto, he was being led by his nose by the vampire, following the exact steps that Midoriya wanted as if he was merely a marionette. Shoto felt a dark feeling spark in his stomach as his team was pushed back by a burst of crimson pellets, the hit staggering them as Izuku and his team increased the distance between two groups. Blood, blood spear burst. How could he forget the fact that the vampire could manipulate his own blood however he wanted, thus his fighting style was only limited by his intelligence, something that Midoriya possessed plenty. This is what I can call a true competition. The scales are never in favor of one for too long, as Team Midoriya and Annoyed Mineta shouted a complaint that was drowned under the deafening cheers from the arena. Pushes back Team Todoroki's assault, their counterattack ever so ferocious to go so far as steal even more points. The blonde hero's voice presented itself like a weight upon Shoto's back. He had been forced to rely on his father's hated power, and even then it wasn't enough to win against the vampire. He hardened his eyes. Ida. Rush them one more time. He commanded. Never mind that his right side had a rigid layer of frost, he needed to win right now. It was a necessity. I can't, my engines have stalled. Right now we are sitting horses. Ida countered, grunting in effort to try and bring something out of his quirk, only black smoke being emitted from his calf pipes. Boom. 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 And out come the second challenge of the competition. Much as he hated to admit, Katsuki Bakugu was an equal opponent to Azuku. The Ash Blonde was ferocious, aggressive, and entirely dedicated to proving that he was the best among the Wana students, going so far as to call many of them by whatever idiotic nicknames he had for them, seemingly not bothered to learn even their names. The Bomber was arrogant, but there was grounds for his stuck-up nature. Fucking ICY hot. Shitty vampire. He came flying like a missile, using the loophole he'd found among the rules to attack the other teams like a ravenous wolverine, starved of victory. 
His explosions launched him to the location where the previous struggle between Izuku and Shoto had happened, changing directions mid-air to attack the whichever had the winning prize of 1 billion points. That meant that Bakugo had his red pupils focused on Izuku, technically Mineta, his hands blasting mini explosions to correct his path. Shitty Vampire has the fucking headband, but Shitty Icy Hot is still in the fucking competition. That disgusting bloodsucker will just shoot me down or use that shadow bullshit to block me in the air. F-U-C-K, this isn't over you shitty monster. Path which he corrected to lead him to Team Todoroki, releasing an explosion to create a large smokescreen, obscuring him from the Todoroki and his team. The Ash Blonde might be arrogant and aggressive in his endeavors, but he wasn't stupid. The vampire would be defeated, but Kogu just needed to deal with the asshat that thought he was superior. He would show him the true alpha of 1A. You fuck. But Kogo shouted, very close to Shoto. His right had extended, a explosion already popping on his palm to blow Icy Hot away when the air horn loudly proclaimed the end of the cavalry match. The bomber wasn't expecting the outcome, his explosions going cold and plunging him back to the earth beneath him. He would have fallen face first, were it not for the inky black shadow tendrils that emerged from the ground and grabbed him a few centimeters from the ground and relieving Bakugu of kissing the earth. Katsuki was pissed off, his anger at being helped by his hated opponent numbing him to the prickling sensation where the tendrils held him with direct skin contact. How lovely, my kittens. You all have given your very best, but not everyone can win. Let's see the efforts of my little heroes. Midnight spoke in a happy tone, the use of stimulating language her usual go-to. The screen on the side of the arena gave a quick view of, of the best moments of the match, many one shots being displayed, much to the annoyance of their sister class. A crack of the R-rated heroine's leather whip called the attention of the public, present Mike taking the cue to begin the announcements. Very well, dear listeners. You have seen their fight, but the outcome could have been anything. Give a great round of applause for our resident vampire and his team. Team Midoriya takes the first place. Hyped by the hero, the crowd gave a deafening sound with their claps and cheers. It had been a very entertaining match, the combination of quirks and skills being put on display gave the civilians the spectacle they seeked out of the event, while the pro heroes were given a sample of the abilities of the students, allowing them the chance to increase their internship calls. For our second place, he pulled his team out of the rear, and slaughtered his way to the top. Explosions Galler, give your cheers for Team Bakugu. The bomber was clearly not happy about his result, grinding his teeth and staring daggers at the green-haired vampire. Third place goes to the elemental powerhouse that is Team Todoroki. The presentation of Shoto and his team was quick, seemingly out of kindness from the voice hero to not put them into a spotlight after they had been brought down by Midoriya and his unusual strategies. And the last, but not least, team to pass to the next round is team, Shinsu. When did they get there? Just kidding. The joke had its intended effect, even if the team leader did not appreciate the subtle jab. He was going to prove his worth with actions. First team, Midoriya Izuku, Hatsume Mei, Tokoyami, Tokoyami Fumikage, and Mineta Minoru. Second team, Bakugo Katsuki, Karishima Aijiru, Ashido Mina, and Siro Hanta. Third team, Todoroki Shoto, Yayorozu Momo, Kaminari Denki, and Tenya Ida. Fourth team, Shinso Hitoshi, Yuraraka Achiko, Kendo Itsuka, and Shiyazaki Ibara. For those that did not make the cut, don't worry. We have plenty of side activities for you to enjoy. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. However, you must always take something to heart. Improvement. The world has seen your efforts, and they shall be rewarded. Always go plus ultra. The blonde hero spoke a rather meaningful message to the students, making those dissatisfied with their results a little less unhappy with their loss. For those that won this round, congratulations. I hope your muscles are still in good shape, because there is still the third part of our festival. Midnight, give these fellows their last event. Said heroin was already getting the students ready, pointing the exits to the remaining others. You heard the man, my cuties. It may be a surprise for you, but not for me. The third event of UA's school festival shall be a combat tournament. 
The screen lit with the names of the winners from the event, their pictures and a grid that displayed who would be fighting. We are giving you an one-hour break for a quick snack as Cementa Sensei shall prepare the stage for you all to shine. Make proper use of this time, my kittens. Once we start, we won't stop. As soon as Midnight finished giving the last details of the competition, as well as giving directions for the allotted breakrooms the students were allowed to take, to take, Izuka shot like a bullet to the closest one, dragging Mei with him at a speed that few managed to notice he had company. He entered the closest door that he was allowed, brought the girl inside and slammed the door close. Zuku, what's the rush? Mei asked, her eyes taking in his frame. He had been huffing for a while, his breathing rough in his eyes with a constant glimmer of his power. His fangs were peeking out of his mouth and she felt a need to have them sink in her neck. A heat emerged on her face, her eyes taking more details on his face. The steam that exited his mouth with each breath, his hungry eyes that called for her. I ended up taking some blood from them. I just, need a break. May I? Izuku asked in a voice that would have melted any resistance that Hatsum would have put up. The thing was that she wasn't putting any, merely opening her jacket and spreading her arms to embrace the vampire. She could see his mouth watering, the fangs shining as they were coated with saliva. Come, Zoku. Even her voice seemed to have sweetened, that was the effect he had over her. He was close to her in a moment, taking her lips and initiating a rough makeout session. She enjoyed it, as different from his usual kind ministrations, the hunger that he presented gave her the best kind of shivers. Nice and caring was good, but when Izuku was rough she enjoyed it the best. May researched a bit on these matters, and she might be what some Meganizes defined as an M, was Izuku then an S? Not that that mattered right now, as he cut their kiss short to lick her neck and grab her rear, it made May press herself hard and again against him, her own breathing beginning to pick up. May tried to speak something, but her voice failed her as Izuka pierced the skin of her neck, her arms managing to only weakly hold the back of his sports jacket. He went easy with his thirst, merely sating the primal hunger that he felt at taking the blood from five individuals at once. The quantity he drank from them was small, but considering earlier that the inner beast had managed to get a hold of his shadow control, more complex quirk factors meant more blood to break them down, thus the sudden streak of animalistic instinct and desires. If Azuku were to be completely honest, he was barely managing to hang on the thread of rationality. He tried to calm down, but the addition of four new factors was too much even for him. True ancestor, latched into the blood that he drank the most of, that being Kamanaki Denki. Already having one quirk factor that dealt with electricity, true ancestor, used the similarities among the two to unlock their potential with astending speed, using the blood he had, he had and was taking from May to fuel the speed at which it broke the quirk factors and assimilated them. All the while his body underwent some small changes to acclimate to this new power, Izuku kept his rough ministrations on May. Squeezing her soft butt, his fangs buried into her neck, the vampire continued playing with Hatsum as he took small sips from her blood. She moaned at his touch, making the vampire's mind wander into dangerous territory while they were in school. He took his fangs from her neck with a wet noise, licking the spot and slowly running his tongue over May's neck. May, I need you to stop me right now. Izuku tried to speak, but his throat refused to say that words as his nose picked a familiar and musky scent. I can't do this at school. His mind battled with his instincts and lust, but the cause was lost. The vampire guided the dazed and flushed girl to the nearest wall, putting himself behind her and the plaster. His right hand snaked its way in between her breasts until it could grab her face by her jaw, dominating her freedom of movement, the left hand rapidly found its way into her pants and inside the already soaked sports-type black underwear. From there, caressing May's lower lips was easy enough. Hatsum's legs squirmed as the good tingles began to build up, something akin to winding a spring. She began grinding her hips against Izuku to increase both the speed and the sensation, but soon enough the mechanic found some oddly cool to the touch matter began wrapping around her legs. Summoning some effort and energy to ascertain what was binding her legs, her psych-shaped pupils found Izuka's shadows acting like his blood tendrils, except that they were much more precise and seemed to need less concentration to maintain. She had seen use them before, but may never imaged Izuku could use them this pre precisely. Ideas began sprouting in her mind about the types of babies she could build for him, 
but her blueprints were wiped clean when the vampire's fingers found their way inside her, as Amon loudly exited her mouth. The vampire found his hand become absolutely soaked as Mane melted into a puddle while leaning against him. Izuku knew he had a wide grin fixed over his lips, his excitement already too great to be contained. Our mate is all ready for us. Let us enjoy this thrill, master. We have plenty of time. Yeah, that sounds nice. Fighting the haze of lust was a foregone idea on Izuku's mind, his shadows already declothing him. Mei was hanging on him by wrapping her arms around his neck, her legs secured and bound by his shadow tendrils. He was just a few layers of clothing away from her soft insides when... Hey, anybody in here? Yararika's voice sounded from behind the door that was already halfway opened. What do you mean you haven't seen where he went? Shoto blocked Tokoyami's path to the stands, almost demanded an answer from the raven-headed teen. Fumikage barely spared Todoroki a glance. What my fellow Abyss Watcher does or does not matters not to you, Todoroki-san. I suggest that stop bothering him, as you might not like when the time comes and the Abyss stares back at you. His warning given, Tokoyami began to proceed to make his way to the waiting lounge. He wanted to rest for a while and have a talk with Dark Shadow about what would be their performance. Yet, it seemed fate was not on side for now as Shoto grabbed a hold of his arm to stop his advance. I need to speak to him right now. A bit of frost grew over Fumikid's grabbed arm, much to the displeasure of said teen. His quirk was of the same mind, emerging from his midsection and smacking away the offending limb with a loud smack. Your wants or needs are not my concern, Todoroki-san. However, while we are in each other's presence, let me give you a piece of advice that might be useful to you now and in the future. If you plan on pissing off Azuku as you are doing right now to me, let the dark gods be my witnesses, you better be prepared to use both parts of your quirk to their fullest extent, else you might not survive to tell any tale. I have witnessed the might that he is capable of, your ice is powerful, as is your fire, yet they won't save you from the terror that shall be unleashed over you. Shoto heard the serious edge present in the voice of his classmate, but he couldn't help the situation. Midoriya had easily brought out his fire powers, and the youngest Todoroki couldn't help but wonder if the vampire was somehow an infiltrated agent of his father that was placed to make Shoto bend to the whims of the tyrannical hero. As things stood, it would be hard for Shoto to acquire any information from the Ravenhead, considering the other teen had his quirk out and ready for any other action Todoroki might take. In the end, he merely stepped aside and let his classmate go unrestricted. Tokoyami looked like he wanted to say something else, but they heard the loud steps of someone approaching them. They might have wondered the identity of such individual, but the increase in room temperature told Shoto all that he wanted to know. Endeavor appeared out of the corner of the corridor, truly a sight to behold. The man was a mass of muscle and flames that would put many to shape, his countenance ever so serious. His flame beard seemed to follow his mood, not a spot out of order as the Todoroki patriarch presented himself to the two teens. Leave now, child. I wish to speak with my son. Fumikage would be lying if he said he wasn't a bit intimidated by the sight, and a minuscule part of himself acknowledged Shoto for being able to stand there as if nothing truly of importance was happening. The raven-headed teen turned to the hero and gave him a head nod. Fare thee well, Todoroki-san. Endeavor-san. As Tokoyami left, father and son stood face to face. The blue eyes of the oldest Todoroki stared down at his son's orbs, the harsh gaze of the man only fueling the anger that Shoto was felling. At what he felt such anger was left answered. Todoroki Enji, or better known as Endeavor, crossed his bulky arms as he huffed a sigh. Shouto. Finally decided to stop your childish tantrum? Wasting your power and throwing time away? My fire and your mother's eyes are the perfect combination, you should be unbeatable, yet here you are, scrambling for a mere second or third place instead of settling an example to be followed. Shoto growled at the man. How dare he? You know nothing about mother. You know nothing about me. I won't use your fire. What happened was merely a slip. Mother's ice is enough. Besides, I wonder where you could have found someone with such a power to try and push me to use your quirk. 
Shoto accused, almost sure that his father would gloat about his ingenious plan to force him to use fire. Endeavor raised his gaze a few inches, giving Shoto the impression he was truly being looked down upon. The man maintained his neutral face for a few moments before his eyes hardened. Midoriya Izuku is who I presume you to be talking about. I have no ties with that child. The hero spoke. It doesn't matter who you pay or bribe, I won't give in to your desires. Shoto said, not believing a word that came out of his father's mouth. He left on his own, leaving Endeavor on his own at the corridor. The flame hero kept looking at his son's back, shaking his head in disappointment. Maybe he should talk with this Midoriya child, since if his son was so inclined to believe he was already paying the child for a service, Enji should make that into a reality. It seems it would be much more efficient, considering the vampiric child had already managed to draw Shoto's flames out. He glanced at the arena, concrete flowing like a fluid as Cementos did his work to create a proper fighting space for the first-year children. He had a few calls to make, which would leave enough time to contact this Midoriya kid in the second round. Enji had no doubts that the vampire would win, considering who he was facing. The flame hero had nothing against the girl the vampire was facing, but considering what he'd seen from Midoriya, and the lack of impressive actions from her, it left very little for Eiji to put in her favor to tip the scales. The hero would wait for the battle, but if he were to bet money on who would win, he was definitively betting on the vampire kid with powerful hemomancy, as opas to the girl with vines for hair. Tournament Chart Izuku Midoriya x Shiyazaki Ibara Hatsum Mei x Yayorozu Momo Tokoyami Fumikage x Bakugo Katsuki Mineta Minoru x Shinso Hitoshi Todoroki Shoto x Kirishima Aijiru Kam Kamirani Denki x Ashido Mina Yararaka Achiko x Kendo Itsuka Tenya Ida x Siro Hanta Back at Izuku's break room Yurarika poked her head inside the room, finding Izuku and Mei casually sitting by, seemingly talking about some gear the mechanic girl had brought with her. Achiko was just glad that she hadn't stumbled into some awkward situation between the two of them, it would be super weird if they were hugging or kissing. The bubbly girl felt her cheeks heat up a bit, but shook the thoughts out of her head. She smiled at the vampire, hoping that he could spare a moment to talk to her. She felt really grateful that the vampire had somehow helped her family with an amazing contract that would take them out of the red and ensure that their construction company wouldn't close down. Money was one of the reasons she had opted for the hero career, as the pay would help her parents out of the debt their company had accumulated. Since they didn't want Yurarika to work with them, her quirk just about perfect for cutting down costs when talking heavy machinery and material transportation, it was the only option she could see where they would not be able to refuse her help. And she wasn't even mentioning the fact that Izuku had Shield Industries supplies for them to work with. As in David Shield. How amazing was that? It made her chest tighten with a warmness that she hadn't experienced before. Achiko smiled and half entered the room, suddenly remembering that she had effectively barged into the room. She rapidly bowed her head. Sorry sorry, Izuku-kun. I was kind of searching for you. Congratulations on advancing for the third event, I wish I could say I'm proud of my displayed talent, but I don't remember much of the cavalry battle. I was kinda in a trance, you know? She explained, seeing the male team flash her a smile. Is that so? His voice was deeper than what she was used to, carrying with it an almost hypnotic tone. It made her cheeks flush a bit. She nodded rapidly, holding the door like it was a lifeline. Where are my manners? Please, sit with us, May and I were just talking a bit about some gear. He called her out, the girl at his side rather quiet, her head tilted so Achiko couldn't see her face. She figured that the pink-haired girl must be shy or something. Besides, she just wanted to thank Izuku a bit for his help, maybe get closer to him. He was a nice guy, pretty smart, strong, and rich. But, it isn't because I want his money or something like that. I just find him to be nice. Yurarika let the thought swim in her head for a few moments as she shook her head sideways. No, it's fine. You can finish your talk, we can chat up another time. You still have my number right? I indeed. 
He stuttered an answer, flinching in place. Achiko wondered about it, her face openly displaying curiosity. Izuku noticed it and fixed a stiff smile over his lips. Don't mind it, just a quirk-related thing. He explained, the action making Yurarika focus on the slight glimmer of his fangs. All right, your quirk makes you like a vampire. Drinking blood and turning into a bat. The girl whispered that last part to herself, the image of Bat Izuku cuter than what she could have pictured. His stiff smile became further frayed, a twitch of the corner of his mouth revealing what at first she thought to be a cute fawn to truly be a long and sharp tooth, the sight enough to snap, snap her back to reality. Why yeah, so. The conversation mostly died down, the trio staring at each other for a few moments. Do you want to drink blood right now? Achiko almost regretted her line, hoping that Izuku did not find the question intrusive or disrespectful. What if he asked the funds back from her family, or decided to sue? She almost panicked, however, crimson light began to gleam from his eyes, his mouth opened and she had a true glimpse at his maw, the sight making shivers run down her back. It was like she had become prey, paralyzed under the gaze of the stronger predator, with the only remaining option to dive inside his maw and end it that much sooner. His mouth snapped close with a click of his teeth, ending the illusion that grabbed a hold of Achiko. If it were any other occasion then I might have taken you on that offer, but you must be a full power for your match, yurarika san I couldn't, in good conscience, weaken you by drinking your blood. Izuku closed his eyes and put his hands over the table, Yurarika noticing the claw-like nails being pressed against the aluminum table. She should really be going now, she had already taken plenty of his time. Okay. I hope that I can really show my skills out there. Good luck with your match, Izuku Kuen. She gave him a bright smile, waving her hand and slowly closing the door. On the outside, Yurarika slowly leaned against the wall, bringing one hand to her chest while the other lifted her phone screen with an eyesight. Slash Ochan, Mama and Papa have finally landed an amazing contract. We always told you to follow your dreams, and now we can support you even further with this. Our contractor seems to be this really young entrepreneur, with an awesome project for us. When your school eases up, how about we have a commemorative dinner with him? His name is Minoriya Izuku. We really have lucked out this time, forward slash sent by Mama at 10.37 am. That felt really different, being looked like, that. His eyes were so full of hunger when I told, I told him to drink my blood. What would it feel like? Would it hurt? Would it feel good? Is ho, three. May mellowed out, fully leaning against the vampire as her mouth released needy pants. It was gut-wrenching when the door was opened and that girl poked her head in. Shame was a rather unfamiliar word for May, but at that moment she guessed that she became pretty intimate with said word and its implications. That, however, didn't seem to be enough to make Izuku stop his rough ministrations. At first they had panicked, the vampire, blink, ing them to the nearest table available, the chairs almost tilting at the sudden new weight. He then had his shadows wrap completely around her lower half, covering her with a veil of darkness that should have hid everything. As they sat there, Izuku rapidly brought to the table one of her babies that was thrown on the floor, talking as if that was all they had been doing all this time. May currently did not have the brain power to follow him, considering the tendril made of shadowy matter that began doing the same work his left hand had been doing a short while ago. May bit down on her lip and lowered her head, else she might have shown that you're a whatever girl a really naughty expression. She was feeling good, but she also wanted Zuku to feel good, so under the table she managed to sneak one hand, her reach just over his inner thigh. The duo continued the ministrations while the vampire talked with the visitor, May a bit busy trying to make him feel good, her own heat almost becoming unbearable. It was just her luck them Zuku finished his conversation with the other girl, Hatsum being deaf to it as his shadow control tendrils suddenly entered her, expanding and touching just about everywhere it could. The cool sensation brought May over the edge, the overly tight spring that had been coiling in her inside snapped and left her both without breath and voice. May's sight-shaped pupils went cross-eyed, her tongue hanging out from her mouth as her entire body felt like the summer night sky during a festival. Her sensitive insides begged for more, and so did May. 
She practically melted into her own release, slowly lowering herself from her chair and sitting on the ground next to him, leaning her head against his lap, almost like a dog. Izuku would be a poor liar if he said the sight didn't further flare a sadistic streak in his heart. He barely managed to hold back the pink haze of lust that was hanging over his mind. He had to be focusing on cultivation and preparing himself for his match, yet his flesh presented a much more compelling argument, shadow tendrils already busy as they snaked their way to the brim of his clothing once more. May. His voice made her head turn his way, eyes still out of focus. No, it would be proper to say her focus was currently on something entirely different. God, why is she so? His line of thought went to kingdom come as the inner beast did what his rationality was impeding, allowing May free access to his lower area. It was his time to exhale heavily as Hatsum's slimy appendage began working over his length. He barely managed to summon the effort to check the time in his phone, still having 30 minutes left before his match. Maybe he should stop this madness while he still had a bit of rational control over himself and Slur erp Lick 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 Suowak Fuck it The time has come, dear listeners. You waited enough, the final round of UA School Festival is hurry. These 16 students have fought and given their all to be present here, to prove their mettle to the entire world. Give a round of applause to our participants. President Mike once more assumed the microphone to hype the crow for what was without question the biggest reason for the popularity of the festival. Battle prowess was an essential part of hero work and something that any hero worth their salt should at least be somewhat proficient. It was a reality of the job, sometimes you won't be able to avoid combat, even if you were specialized in something else. Let's start this whole shebang in high gear. Grab your popcorn and your soda, and don't sit at the edge of your sit, else you might fall off. Presenting on the right side, the overlord of the Knight of 1A, UA's resident vampire and rumored to be immortal, the one and only Midoriya Izuku. The vampire slowly walked to his side of the arena, eyes gleaming with eldritch light. The clapping this time were more subdued, considering the serious face of the vampire. Serious right at the start? Spoil sport. Never mind then, let US focus on the left side entry. A holy image and an even holier attitude, IT seems that Santa Maria herself has descended to erase the sins of the world. From 1BS Shiazaki Ibarra. The girl with vine hair made her way to the platform, hands clasped together as if she was praying. Present Mike Sensei, please do mind the things you are saying. I would never compare myself to such an important figure as the Holy Mother. Besides, my attitude is merely a reflection of the treatment I want to receive from my peers, as the gospel preaches. Shiozaki exclaimed, her classmates throwing a few jokes her way. She was well-intentioned, but sometimes her way of wording out things made the girl seem preachy or stuck up. Not that she would ever become so, for it was against the good word of the gospel. Midoriya san, I hope that we have an honorable match and that the best may become the winner. Izuku nodded, his gleaming eyes not meeting hers. Ibarra frowned a bit at the display, but focused on waiting for Midnight Sensei to start the match. Both sides do understand all the rules, correct? Let us enjoy a good show from both of you, but no funny business. The sultry voice of the heroine carried a hidden edge that the students noticed right away. Good kittens. Now, fight. Her shout was followed by a crack of her whip, the audience giving their last exited shouts to encourage both sides in different ways. Ibra closed her eyes for a few seconds and released a light breath, opening them with an obvious fervor. Her mistake, however, was taking her eyes off her opponent, even if for a second. Her dull green pupils widened in surprise as she found no one where there should be her opponent. A shiver ran down her back as he felt a presence behind her, her vines sprouting thorns and lashing out like living snakes, digging into concrete as surprising strong hair slammed and rose a light cloud of concrete dust. Yet, there was no target there either. And then a whisper happened right by her ear. Thank you for the meal. Another salvo of her hair came to her defense, 
this time the thorny vines found a target. Your underhanded tactics end here. She shouted, her vines wrapping viciously around the target. She would ask for forgiveness later, but right now her heart was racing a little too fast for her taste. Pity for her, her quirk had only managed to entangle itself around a shadowy matter, akin to a black sludge that would be much better in place at a horror movie. Wasn't his quirk vampirism? What sort of unholy thing is that? Shiyazaki was feeling a heavy weight start to sink in her heart, a weird grip that neither clasped nor released her, leaving the Christian with the incoming dread building up. What is going on? She tried to recall her vines, but the black sludge held firm. She was about to cut off their connection when the wind rushed at her side, the girl now face to face with one A's class president and his crimson lit orbs. His hands slowly and gently grabbed her shoulders, their eyes never breaking sight from each other. Her world slowed to a crawl, each second a lifetime. Would you kindly lose? But that will be the end of this video. Thanks for watching this video. Hoped you enjoyed this story. If you did enjoy this story, please leave a like and subscribe. And join the Discord down below. And make sure to check out Blood for the Blood God and the author Ryujin Mao on fanfiction.net. The link to the story is down below. So please go check them out and support them for making this great story. But that will be the end of this video. Goodbye. Kosho out.